Welcome to the final 1000 kilometer review of the KSS18. As always, if you haven't seen the first review, which is the unboxing and range test, where we actually did 100 kilometers, which is a bit unusual, um, to try and get the overall feel for this machine, because it was so new, first one on the market with suspension, we wanted to test it thoroughly. Go and watch that, then go and watch the 250 kilometer review update, and then the 650 kilometer update, and then resume this video. So I'm just going to do a very quick overview of this. Uh, how have I been getting on? It has actually been performing fine. Nothing's changed for, since the first video, since the unboxing. Nothing's actually fallen off this. We've got the pads which are coming off, which have been resolved. Go and see the 650 kilometer review for all the changes. Pads are one of those. So this has changed. They changed the suspension unit. They've changed the height adjustability on the wheel. At the moment, it sits for me a little bit high, even if it's lowest point. Um, so you may want to lower that right down, especially if you're doing a lot of road riding, using it for commuting. Then from that point of view, being able to lower it down a little bit more, get that center of gravity down, will definitely aid you in your riding. The tire, I tend to find it loses traction. When you're riding along and you hit some mud, if you're leaning just slightly, just slightly left or right, it will try and kick out. And that's kind of because you're high point you haven't got a low center of balance and the tire. Now they're changing the tire. It's another thing they're changing. They've adjusted a lot to try and overcome these pre-production, which is this machine now is, it wasn't at the time, a pre-production version of the wheel. Loads of things have been changed. Um, see the previous video for a full list of those. In terms of bombing along the road, commuting, solid piece of kit. It will just keep a solid speed. No worries whether you're going uphill, downhill, on the flat, off-road, it will just stick a speed and you just push against that motor and it is lovely. It feels really, really solid. It's never felt weak at all in any area. So you're riding along, you can accelerate, lean into it. It's not trying to go, whoa, I can't give you that. It just gives you that power, um, which is brilliant. Really good, feels like a real solid commuting tool. I found with the suspension, we get a lot of questions now where all these years we've survived without suspension. We've got one model currently on the market. V11 is hitting right about now. The V11, so we've got two models that got suspension at this point in time. Check out the date of recording. People are saying, oh yeah, I, I like that wheel. Shame it hasn't got suspension, which is crazy because all the wheels have never had suspension. And a lot of the suspension comes from the tire. So depending on what tire you got fitted to your unicycle will make a huge difference to how it handles and responds in terms of suspension. Now, is suspension everything? Absolutely not. There's sacrifices that need to be made to fit this unit. Within this unit, it's battery size. So there's a sacrifice that's been made to produce an amazingly engineered contraption <laughs> with this suspension unit fitted here. It's brilliant. The engineering is lush. It feels really solid. It's rock solid, this. Um, it just feels pretty epic, to be honest, and it looks the business, doesn't it? But there is a sacrifice to be made, and in this case, it's battery size. Um, is it worth the payoff? For me, I do a lot of long journeys, like really long. I mean, I've been doing more than normal recently, to be fair. Uh, but I do epically long things, so 60, 70 miles days wouldn't be unheard of kind of thing as we're doing these tests. And, and going back down to about 1,000-ish watt hours, um, that's a big hit when I've been also test riding, for instance, the Sherman, which has got 3,200 watt hours of battery. So it's, it's a significant difference. It's always the same. It's that there's no perfect wheel. This is, you can transport this thing about. With the Sherman, you can't really. So there's loads of different things. You need to go and watch as many videos as you can. Um, and you can ask us questions in the comments below. This will suit someone who's commuting to a T as long as you're not doing more than 20 odd miles. So say 20 miles as a benchmark. As long as you're not doing more than that, and that's very unlikely. Our customer base, the ones that are commuting are not commuting 20 miles into work. There are some but it's very rare um, in the grand scheme of things. So this could be spot on. The suspension works incredibly well. The, there's the example that I can think of very recently is a trail in the Forest Dean I never usually hit because it's quite uncomfortable to ride down. I just don't bother because it's not nice. It's about a half a mile trail of constant up and downs all the time. And it's like, ah, so I never ride it, never ride it. And I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll give it a go on this. And it was a pleasure. And what made it more of a pleasure was really bent knees. Really bent knees coupled with that going on at the same time. Lovely, it skipped, hopped and skipped all the way down that trail, so much so I came back up it. 
and I left that little trail with a smile on my face thinking this is the time when that's shone, it's really shone. All the other times I've been thinking, yeah, not so sure, not so sure about suspension, um, it, but it definitely takes, it takes a kick out of something. Like myself, got a bit of a problem with my lower back. You hit something you're not expecting, that's when that comes in. It just takes that shock out of it. I mean, you're literally talking that much. So it takes that kick out. And that's happened quite a few times. Had I been on, let's refer to them as hardtails, like mountain bikes, you would have really felt that and it was shocked up through your back. So if you've got knee issues, back issues, or you want to prevent either of those two, that can definitely be an aid to it. But there are sacrifices to be made in other areas, uh, handling and range being two of those, that you've got to decide whether that's actually going to be for you. On that trail that I hit, it was beautiful. I haven't ridden a wheel down there as smooth as this took me down there, so that's great. Coupled with that motor power, it just kept on giving, and it was brilliant. Riding an off-road trail, really bumpy, working that suspension out, it was spot on. Um, really, really good. Trolley handle, the unclipping mechanism of that is a pain in the butt currently. Wasn't when it was brand new. They have changed this as well. I think they've put an emblem sticker on there to raise the basically the, the push button out. At the moment it's flush, nice and smooth. You still have to get your hand right in there and really get it in the middle to make the thing work. Um, and so they've changed that as well. So there's a lot of things here that I'm critiquing that have changed um, and they really shook it up. Go and see the 650 kilometer review video for that completely. So I just basically go through the whole thing. There's a lot of changes that have gone in. The lights work perfectly. I've been riding this at night especially to go and try it out, see what it's actually like. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. That's perfectly bright enough. The, you can see the mud splatters on this thing. This mud guard has been brilliant. I haven't had anything over me at all, no mud spraying back up or anything like that. So winter riding, and as you've seen in the previous videos, I have been riding this in the rain as well. I have no issues, no negative results whatsoever. It's a really rounded, well-produced wheel. And with the changes they put in, they seem to address all the little niggles that, um, that I came across. So they've got slightly thicker padding here. They've got better glue that they're sticking it down with. They're all little things and some big things, big changes that have, have leveled this back up to where it should have been on first release. So in terms of just commuting, absolutely brilliant. Like coming to work, it's eight miles in. Basically it's eight miles, depending on which route I take, the shortest I can take is five. It's just, it just never lets up. It's just brilliant, it gives all the power you need. Um, the issue with braking is supposedly related to the tire. Don't know, so tire and pads. Um, those two things combined are supposed to uh, be resolved. So hopefully so, can't test them myself. That's under heavy braking and specifically noticeable uh, with a downhill. So if you're sharp downhill, you come into a junction fairly quickly and you try and put on the brakes. Unlike other electric unicycles that I've ridden, this one will start getting a bit of tank slap on, as I call it. Uh, but if you see the previous videos, with a bent knee and leaning right back over it, so your bums, you're up here normal, and your bum's right back here and crouch down, it brings that under control and you can manhandle it as long as you twist your legs in and hold the sides. So, shouldn't really be riding in a situation where you need to slam the brakes on suddenly, but those things obviously can happen. If someone pulls out in front of you and you could never have known it was gonna happen, then you might need to use that. And I've had that a couple of times. I had a girl, must have just qualified driving, she pulled right out in front of me uh, yesterday, traveling on a road. Um, I could kind of see her in the distance and she stood completely still, completely still. And more or less, as I got right up to her, pulled out. I was like, whoa, put the brake on, a bit of a tank slap, and I actually had to go around the back of her because she didn't slam her brakes on him and then reverse back up. She just, well, I'll just carry on then. It's like, <laughs> so in instances like that, of course, it can happen. But it's one of those things, if you're aware of and you practice it, you practice riding this and getting used to this wheel and how it responds, then you just completely get au okay fait with it and you're completely used to it. If you're jumping on it for the first time, off, especially off another wheel, and you go pin it down the road, depending on how these new tyres are um, and at what height you've got it set up, it's great, it's adjustable, then that may come into play. You need to play about with this to start with. If you're buying this wheel and you're going to be on your first time on it and have ridden other wheels, ride this, as we say, the golden rule, ride it for 50 miles to critique a wheel. 50 miles should give you a good rounded opinion of what it's like. And you'll get used to riding it slightly different with the suspension unit and the shape uh, is slightly different. Um, so that's it really. If you've got any questions, I can answer them below. The 2.5 amp charge that comes with it, it charges in quick time because it's only a thousand watt hours, just above a thousand watt hours. So it charges quickly. Uh, it has been on charge a lot, but then I've been doing a lot of miles to try and get up to a thousand kilometers in such a short space of time, which is accomplished. 
and nothing has fallen off it. So we're talking about these pads and things like that stuck back on. I've left them, I've done no repairs this apart from the first time I took out the box and this pad fell off. I've left it like it is to see how it pans out and I haven't cleaned it once. So I've done nothing with the cleaning at all. So you can get a really clear idea of where dust is gonna gather and mud's gonna gather. You are gonna maintain it better in terms of cleanliness when you have your own wheel. I wanted to show you what this looked like if nothing was touched at all and what does it look like after a massive thousand kilometer of riding. That's basically it. I've covered it all off in the previous reviews up to this point. Nothing's really changed um, and it hasn't broken down. It's been 100% reliable. Something you can definitely rely on. I've gone up steep, massive hills. Again, it's been up May Hill, which is a hill I've mentioned before. And it's been on some serious off-roading, slamming it, trying to get that suspension to work out, see if there's any bugs and niggles in that. Nothing's come loose. It has stayed absolutely solid. Not one bolt out of all these bolts is out of place. I've never knocked the O-ring off the bottom with the PSI I've got in, so it's pretty much right. Um, it could probably be a bit harder, um, but I like to ride it in a little bit soft. And again, you can tune this, you can swap this out, you can do loads. So for modding purposes, loads can be done with that area for sure. These struts actually, before I go, these I thought were gonna get filthy dirty, don't seem to be affected. So that being wide open, there's, there's basically hardly any dust or anything on those, very little. Um, it's almost all concentrated around this area. So you will need to keep this clean for, for the longevity of this shock. It's a fairly inexpensive shock on it, to be fair. You can go and buy it again for 100 quid. Um, and fit another one. So you could if you can't be bothered to clean it, as long as you want to spend £100 a year or whatever it's going to be swapping that shock out, you can do that. It's up to you. Probably best to keep it clean. Put a little dab of shock oil on it, on a cloth once it's cleaned up. Um, compress it a few times, pull any dirt back out of the seals and then wipe it off and away you go. It's a, it's a two minute job. No issues whatsoever. Perform solidly for exactly what it's designed to do and how it's supposed to be. So that's it really. That is, you can say goodbye now. I'm probably not gonna get rid of this one. It is probably gonna go on the back wall here because it is the first of a kind that came out. It's first in the UK. Um, it's a bit of a special one, to be honest. So probably gonna put it on the wall behind and it'll be a bit of a trophy, I suspect, unless I hit on hard times and then I'll sell it. I'm joking, I might sell it anyway. Who knows? For a while, I'll stick it on the back wall, put it that way and it may come up for sale. Um, but the other ones coming out have got all the adjustments to it. So unless I sell it with all those different tire, different side pads, different shock, you know, all those things, different button on the top here, all those changes, unless I sell it with that, really you're buying this inferior model of what it's actually gonna be when it comes out. So probably just stick it on the wall as a bit of an expensive trophy. Um, sometimes you've gotta take the hit for you guys. So there we go. I'm really glad to report though, that it hasn't been faulty at all. It's just worked spot on. So that's good news. The actual heart of this thing is just solid and strong, um, which is really cool. Cool to report, happy to report that sort of news. So again, like, subscribe, follow, share, all that sort of business. Um, and I'll see you on the next wheel review because this is done now, a thousand kilometers, and my legs kill. Right. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, sign up to electricpeople.org as well. Join in with a combo. Okay.